Hello and welcome to this top down engine tutorial. I'm Renault from My Mountains and today we're gonna see how cameras work in the top down engine. So just like in any Unity project, you're gonna need a camera or more in your level to see the action. Uh, the top down engine includes a few camera specific scripts, uh, but you can use any camera script with the asset or implement your own or build on top of the provided script. There's nothing mandatory here and you can do whatever you want. So we're going to see that in this video. In all the demo scenes, you'll find a camera rig. So it's a transform holding both a regular camera and a UI camera. So in our case, uh, I'm in the Koala Dungeon demo scene. And here I have my Koala Cameras transform, which contains a bunch of stuff. So first of all, you'll find well some dust particles. So it's really just um, a particle effect that follows the camera. It looks like uh, you know these tiny, tiny dots over there. And we have our Cinemation camera and our main camera. These, these two work together to render the scene. And we have our UI camera, which is set to, uh, its scaling mass is set to UI. And it's gonna be like su superimposed over the main camera's render to display all the UI. Uh, in it, you'll find the inventory canvas, the regular canvas, which contains uh, an FPS counter, but also um, the avatar has bar, stuff like that. And uh, just using this rig or copying, you know, one from maybe the, the minimal, uh, the minimal scene 3D maybe uh, could be a good a good start. You know, you get uh, everything you need. You just get that prefab, make some changes to it, and you're good. So the engine relies on Cinemachine to handle cameras' base behavior. It's a beautiful and powerful tool that should cover all your needs when it comes to camera movement and behavior. Um, I won't cover in this tutorial how exactly to use Cinemachine. It has its own documentation and tutorials that do that perfectly well. Uh, I'll just give you a short introduction, but then, you know, really I recommend uh, digging into it because it's indeed a complex tool and uh, there is a lot to, to uncover. So, um, First thing first, um, basically the way Cinemachine works is you're gonna need a regular Unity camera and you're gonna need to put a Cinemachine brain on it. And then you create one or more uh, virtual cameras or you can, you know, like simply uh, drag and drop this prefab uh, or any prefab from one of the demos and it's set up for you, but otherwise uh, know that it works like that. So um, a main camera, with a, a Cinemachine brain and one or more uh, virtual cameras. And on the virtual cameras, uh, you can see that when you're uh, playing, you can you, you get a lot of like gizmos on screen and there is a lot you can change on the virtual camera. So don't make your changes on the main camera. Like uh, if I were to try to uh, even in my scene, you know, uh, like move the main camera, I can't. Everything is done on the virtual camera, so I can move the virtual camera. Well, uh, with that setup, you don't see much, but um, you, you move the, the virtual camera, not the main camera, and you can, uh, on the virtual camera, you can do all the changes you want, like uh, change the, the field of view. You can uh, maybe change the camera distance to something closer. Uh, you can change the screen X, screen Y, so you get you get all sorts of um, really options here. You can have a noise, which is really an option I love that gives you this nice um, subtle movement all the time, and you'll be able to define you know the dead zone, uh, which is like for example, let's say I increase it, uh, I can now move a lot more before having the camera start tracking my movement. So I could go like that. Well, if my dead zone is much shorter, you can see that as soon as I move, camera movement starts tracking. So as I was saying, most of it uh, is just regular Cinemachine, but there are a few specifics to the engine. So if we look at our virtual camera here, and if I fold this, you'll see that we have a bunch of other components. The first one is a Cinemachine confiner. So what a confiner does is it confines, uh, restrains the position of a virtual camera within a certain bounding box, a bounding volume. As you can see, uh, and that's gonna be the case in most scenes, 
uh, it is empty by default and that's because you don't have to do anything. This is done automatically by the level manager. So when we press play, you'll see that this bounding volume gets automatically bound and uh, that is done by the level manager. So uh, what it does is if we select our, our level manager, you see we have this huge box and um, automatically the camera will be confined to that. If you want to change how uh, the level, the camera's level, the level's camera is constrained, uh, all you have to do is select your level manager and change the size of the uh, box collider. And you can either apply, you know, an offset on the center, stuff like that, but you can also simply move it around. And if you press play, You see that my camera is now super constrained and it doesn't follow me around as I move. Uh, it is, yeah, it is blocked right now because obviously my the, the, the volume I gave it to move is quite simple and quite small. Then if we go back to our virtual camera, uh, the next script you'll see are a Cinemachine camera controller. So uh, this one is really super simple. Uh, and again, you don't have to worry about it. It's handled automatically, but uh, it's gonna be used to turn the camera on and off, uh, disable or enable following, stuff like that. So it's really just a helper class used by other classes in the engine. Uh, and then we have a camera shaker and a Cinemachine zoom. So these, I, as you can imagine, uh, will be used by feedbacks to shake the camera and to uh, zoom in and out. Uh, we have both a Cinemachine camera shaker and an impulse listener. So uh, this gives you options to either use uh, Cinemachine's impulse system, which is compatible with um, my feedback system, or you can use more mountains uh, shake events. So you, you, it's just two different ways to shake your camera. And that's all there is to know about Cinemachine. The rest is just regular, uh, pure native Cinemachine. So just like Cinemachine, uh, the engine also uses a bunch of other packages uh, to improve cameras. Uh, the second one after Cinemachine would be the Pixel Perfect camera. Uh, it's used for the Koala demo because you know it's it's pixel art so it made sense to use that that component that now comes uh, with the package managers so you go to window package manager and make sure pixel perfect is installed and what this one does is you specify a pixel per unit size so really that depends on how you've created your pixel art but in my case it was 16 uh, you define a reference resolution and this component will be responsible for creating a render texture that ensures that your pixels remain crisp at all size. Uh, that is the reason for these black bars here because my reference resolution has a different ratio than the one I'm displaying this window in. And that's it. Uh, you don't have to do anything really. And if you want to learn more about it, there's, uh, Unity has some nice documentation on it. And finally, uh, the last package being used in the engine. So we have Cinemachine, the Pixel Perfect camera, and we also have the post processing uh, stack here. Not up to date right now, but it really doesn't really much matter. Um, and you'll find that one on the main camera in each scene, but you could use uh, volumes if you prefer. You know, there are tons of ways to set that up. Um, the few things to know are that, of course, uh, these affect performance. So uh, this is with, without, with. Um, but I think they look cool and are quite easy to use. So uh, I made a selection, you know, in most of the demos, usually rely on Bloom. Uh, but you, you can activate, add more effects if you want, clicking like that. Uh, you could add, you know, um, well, motion blur, for example. And that would look like so. Maybe too much motion blur. Um, but you get the idea. So you can you can customize that, tweak the, the color grading, for example, to your liking uh, and have something really visually different super quickly. 
Um, this is native Unity. I won't explain all the details of that. It's it's well documented. Uh, just know that uh, if you want to use the feedback system that uh, exploits these post-processing effects, you'll need to have shakers on your camera, or at least on the same at the same level as your volume. So if you make a, a volume that is separate from the camera, you need shakers on that for the feedbacks to work. But that is covered in a different video and different documentation. I don't have much more to say about cameras in the engine, so I think that covers it. If you have other questions, uh, please let me know, and I'll be happy to, to explain more. In the meantime, I hope you learned something new today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.